and it's so good to see everybody. It just I will do that. Fun. I just have a comment for Chris because I know he's going to be watching the tube this afternoon. I thought of your dad. He loved his football, and Aaron Rodgers is wonderful. So I'll be rooting too. Oh, now wait a minute. I'll be rooting for Tom Brady. Sorry about that. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm a New Englander. Well, Chris Kiesler <laughs> has a Wisconsin background. So uh, Green oh, Bay okay. is. Yep, my dad was born and raised in Green Bay. So he. Was he? Yep. And um, they. Who's played... dad? I can't see who's speaking. Chris Kiesler. Chris Keesler. Your dad was born in Green Bay. Wow. Well, so, the well, so was played. Fran Hitter. Yep, Fran as well. The Packers played at their high school stadium uh, for years before Lambeau Field was built. Um, so dad spent a good bit of his childhood crawling under fences to get into Packer games. So. <laughs> wow. That's funny. So are we ready to go, Mally? Yep. Yes. All right. Well, let me get my PowerPoint up here. Good morning. Uh, Chris will be leading us in several activities this morning. So um, I turn it over to you. I just was looking at Facebook, Chris, and saw Justin's um, comment about the lobster you say fishing <laughs> in, uh, uh, in Nicaragua and Honduras and how dangerous that's been for some of our brothers there. Yep, and uh, which uh, interestingly tied in a bit with, with Andrew's sermon as far as the, the fishing trade and, and um, the fact that there are a lot of fishermen still uh, certainly in Nicaragua and Honduras and it's quite dangerous for the lobster uh, fishermen most especially since they have to dive, um, and uh, that's that's something else. Um, uh, Chris, yes. could, could you really speak up? Um, I'm having a little problem hearing you. Sure, how's this? Any that's better? better, thank you. Okay. Better. All right, now do you see my presenter screen or do you see yes. one slide? All right. It is one slide, it's perfect. That's what you're seeing now is one? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. What you need to see. Um, I'm getting a message to admit somebody, so I'm gonna do that. Hopefully it's somebody you know, it's a long number. Um, we'll see who pops on here. Uh, well, somebody by phone. Okay, it's great to be with you all again. And, um, uh, just it's an honor um, to be able to share this time with you all. And again, on behalf of the Border World Mission, we give thanks uh, for the many ways in which Home Reagan Church reaches out beyond its, its walls, beyond Salem, beyond Winston-Salem, beyond um, our national borders, and um, to, to help us to, to accomplish our mission here at the Border World Mission. You all have been a key part of that for, for many, many years, and that has certainly only continued. If you remember back to last week, we talked a lot about our Moravian heritage and history as it has informed us as to who we are, the fact that a mission is such a central part of our DNA. Uh, we also talked a bit about uh, how the Border World Mission has over the years, since its inception in 1947, um, came under its sort of present present day formation, um, serving both the Northern and Southern provinces, along with the Alaska province, who's also a part of our, our border world mission. Um, and how that sort of changed over the years. Uh, again, we quickly went down uh, the list of directors uh, and there they are. Uh, since 1947, we have been uh, led by these um, brothers and sister, um, uh, Bishop Kenneth Hamilton, the first director of the Border World Mission, then Bishop Ed Quartz, Brother Ted Hartman, who was on the staff with Brother Quartz. Um, uh, Ted was a, a member uh, at uh, Westside Moravian Church here in Bethlehem, worked very closely with Ed Quartz, uh, and when Ed uh, stepped aside, uh, Ted took over. Uh, and then uh, Graham Wright, uh, sorry, I missed Graham in there. Graham came um, 
after Ted, and then Ted Wildey, Hampton Morgan, Will Seibert, Judy Gantz, and uh, down to today, Justin Robach. Um, Justin is a member of uh, one of our congregations in Wisconsin, and Justin is, as well served has served the Border World, Border World Mission for several years. He was on staff under Judy, uh, Sister Gantz, and um, then when she retired, uh, Justin was named the director, and he is doing an outstanding job for those of you who were on the first of these Sunday School series um, back at the, on the 10th of uh, January. Uh, Justin did that, that one, and you, you'll, you'll know just how, how wonderful it is at communication, but also behind the scenes, Justin is a wonderful organizer, so he's doing a wonderful job. We also talked a bit uh, over um, last week's uh, session about how our emphasis has changed a bit from a primarily uh, sending organization, sending missionaries out um, to a variety of places, uh, mostly here in the Western Hemisphere, but Nicaragua, Honduras, Guyana, uh, many of the Caribbean islands, uh, and Alaska. Uh, and that today we uh, have changed necessarily because most of the provinces that those folks were serving um, 40, 50 years ago have now grown up and assumed responsibility for themselves. Uh, and now we walk alongside them uh, and with them and, and enable and assist them in their mission and in their ministry. So we are no longer sending um, dozens of missionaries in different places, but we are sending uh, as we are able to during these days uh, and will be again uh, after the pandemic is, is behind us, be able to send mission teams, um, experts uh, into the field where they're needed to assist, uh, and then again to come back and allow those partner provinces to again assume responsibility for their own mission and ministry with our assistance when needed. So again, as Justin mentioned in, uh, on the first session, uh, our purpose statement as a Border World Mission is to build relationships through mission outreach and mission engagement to be faithful to the Great Commandment and to the Great Commission. In our mission outreach, we remain connected to our uh, partner unity provinces. Those are Costa Rica, Eastern West Indies, Guyana, Honduras, Nicaragua, Western Tanzania and our mission provinces, Cuba and Labrador, and our mission areas, Peru and Sierra Leone. So that's our mission outreach is maintaining those connections um, and provide assistance whenever needed in those provinces. The flip side then of our purpose is, is our mission engagement. And our mission engagement seeks to involve congregations in both the northern and southern provinces in mission education and discernment mission teamwork, fundraising for MDR and other mission projects. So what we're doing today is part of my department as I'm director of the mission engagement uh, por portfolio on the Border World Mission. And that's precisely uh, why it's wonderful for me to be able to relate to you today. This is the mission engagement um, side of that equation. And both of those inform each other. Uh, as, as we improve our connection with our mission provinces, they inform us, and though in that way, we inform our congregations, uh, and we seek to educate and to coordinate our efforts uh, together, and that increases our ability to, again, reach out to our partner provinces. So it's a never-ending wheel that goes back and forth. Part of our mission uh, outreach right now has been, as you well know, since the beginning of November uh, when uh, hurricanes uh, Eta and Iota hit Nicaragua first and then uh, Honduras um, with torrential rains and some significant flooding. Um, and so part of, we have now uh, distributed $131,000 uh, and about to do some more uh, between the three provinces, in, uh, the two provinces in Honduras and the one province in Nicaragua. And a good chunk of what we sent this last time went to purchasing seeds. Um, their rice and bean crops were completely destroyed by the floods. Uh, and so right now is planting season for beans. Uh, and so uh, the Nicaraguan church uh, and the Honduran churches, um, part of the allotment that we have just sent went to purchasing 
uh, bags of seeds uh, for beans. Uh, so these pictures that I'm showing you are of that most recent distribution. Um, these pictures come uh, from along the Rio Coco, which is the main river that uh, it's actually the, the border forms the border between Honduras and Nicaragua. Um, and again, received uh, again between the two storms, they got 60 inches of rain in some places. Uh, and that's in a matter of two weeks. So the, the flooding was was horrific. Uh, and again, damage to crops uh, was was great. And so it's wonderful that our the funds that we have collected um, through our Moravian Disaster Response Fund over these last two months has enabled them to purchase these seeds um, and uh, distributing them to families who can now begin to uh, plant these things on their farms. So again, thank you all, because I know Home Church was part of that effort, um, received several gifts from you all over the last month for MDR, and um, this is where that part of where that money went. Um, and it's significant in that this now sets them up for months to come, if not even beyond that, uh, with a stable supply of food once they grow and, and begin um, to bear fruit. So thank you for that. I'd like to spend a little time this morning um, uh, basically reflecting on the Great Commandment. Again, this is part of our mission statement as we seek to be faithful to both the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. And we'll spend a little time on the Great Commission next week. Um, but this week, I wanted us to do some reflection on the Great Commandment. And it might be helpful, I should say, if, if you can have somewhere nearby you uh, a piece of paper and, um, and a pencil or pen, something to write on, because you'll be asked to, to jot some things down as we move along here. So um, uh, as, as we get started here, if you need to run and get that, please feel free to do that. Uh, it'll, it'll make this a lot more meaningful for you uh, if you have something just to jot uh, a few words uh, down on. So the great commandment, the great commandment comes near the beginning, um, or at least in the middle of many of the gospels. Uh, and it was a point of clarification uh, for Jesus uh, and, and as people began to, to grapple with what's this all mean? What, what is the relationship with God ab all about? And, and uh, so one of the scribes came near and, he and heard Jesus and the Pharise Pharisees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So, the great commandment. Interestingly, this scribe comes to Jesus and asks for one of the most important commandments of all of the 613 commandments found in the Hebrew scripture, 613 commandments. Who can remember all of that? And so he was asking, <laughs> which is the most important? And again, he's seeking some clarification here. He's, he's hearing Jesus and the religious leaders of his day arguing and disputing about certain things. And so he wants some clarity from Jesus about just what is the most important thing. Because as challenging it is to keep all of them, there was always a great debate among <laughs> scholars, and certainly among Jesus and, and the religious leaders of his day, about how they were to be priorities. So again, this scribe comes to Jesus and simply says, <laughs> which is the most important? Jesus' first response was a predictable one for a faithful Jewish uh, pilgrim of his day as he recites, recites the command found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. So Jesus answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This would have been a very 
familiar scripture passage to anyone in that region, Jew or Gentile. It is a central command for all faithful Jews, even to this day. It is the, what is known as the Shema, uh, the centerpiece of their faith. It is part of their everyday, uh, their morning devotions. It is recited actually twice, as well as in their evening prayer services, and is considered to be the most essential prayer of all of Judaism. First of all, it's an affirmation of God's singularity. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. The singularity of who God is. There is one God. And then secondarily to that is the need for devotion. Not of just a part of us, but of all of who we are. And as Andrew talked about the, the fishermen following God's call that they heard through Jesus on that day to immediately get up and leave their nets and their family and their livelihoods behind the tall order. Uh, and, but they, as faithful Jews as well, um, knew that they needed to follow God with everything they had. Uh, and so they were taking a step into that as they took that day. Um, that passage later on in Deuteronomy goes on to tell them that they should post these, um, these scripture passages on their doorposts. They should post these scripture passages in the little boxes we call phylacteries that they would put, the men would put these on their foreheads. They would strap these phylacteries or boxes on their arms and on their hands as well. Uh, I've had the privilege of, of taking a Holy Land tour with uh, Brother Rick, and uh, I'll never forget the first trip over. We were flying on El Al, the Israeli airline, and early in the morning, again, this was an overnight flight, and so early in the morning, uh, as we're uh, approaching about two hours left in the flight, I see groups of men gathering um, in areas of the airplane and putting these uh, leather straps with these boxes again on their hands, on their arms, and again on their foreheads. And they gathered together for their morning prayers. And in the, that box, um, there's actually the box that goes on their forehead has four different compartments to it. Um, one compartment for each of the four senses that's present in the head, the, the, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, the sense of taste, and the sense of hearing. But on each of the, in each of those compartments is a leather, little leather scroll with this particular verse on it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And so with all four senses on the head, that box with its four compartments and four scrolls, each with that verse on it, means they turn all of their senses over to God. They awaken all of their senses to hear and to feel, to touch and to taste uh, who God is and God's presence in their world. Um, it means all of those senses. And then the ones on their arm, uh, again, one, it's sort of, I guess, the one towards their hand uh, for that sense of touch, uh, but also the one on their arm, they place close to the heart um, so that it too can sense. That's just got that, that one compartment, the one that goes on the arm and on the hand uh, for that sense of touch, but also the one next to their, uh, on their arm, next to their heart, again, to symbolize their giving of their heart and having their heart awakened um, to sense God's presence. So again, that's a verse that they recite every morning before they wake up or as they wake up and as they do their morning prayers, as they do their evening prayers again, they recite those texts once again. They're also posted on the doorposts of all the homes. And again, going back to my trips with Brother Rick to, to the Holy Land, even at our hotels, uh, each of the rooms in the hotel had a box uh, attached to the doorposts. Uh, and that scripture passage is in there as well. Uh, so that anytime they leave their homes, um, anytime they leave their hotel rooms, um, they touch that uh, and they remember that scripture verse. So as they step into the world, they're also reminding themselves of God's 
being one and that they give everything they have. Um, again, their heart, their soul, their mind, and their strength um, goes into that. So, as this scribe comes to Jesus on this particular day and asks, which is the most important um, commandment, it's no secret and no wonder that Jesus speaks up with this particular word and this particular verse. But then Jesus goes a significant step further. Uh, it just doesn't leave it with our relationship with God and our being awake for God's movement. But Jesus takes this second one uh, and, and, and moves it further and amplifies it into the world. So, uh, so at this critical juncture in this conversation, uh, Jesus picks up the theme of caring for others. Uh, Jesus here is referring to a, a scripture passage in Leviticus that says, The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. So the alien that's residing with you shall be to you as a citizen among you, and you shall love the alien as yourself. For you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Leviticus 19 Verse 34. So Jesus is taking that first commandment that deals mainly with our relationship with God and then attaches to it this second and, and equal commandment, he says, is to reach out beyond yourself uh, and to consider those who are foreigners to be as citizens to you because you yourself were once an alien uh, and, and so you know what it's like. It's part of who we are. Uh, and so we live out today um, the notion that any alien that comes into our land is to be considered as a citizen, and we would love them as we would love ourselves. So taking this concept from Hebrew scripture, Jesus connects love of God to love of both self and, again, of neighbor. He is saying that if we don't love our neighbor, then our love for God might prove to be quite shallow and self-serving rather than self-giving. So what I'd like for us now uh, for a few moments is to spend some time in, in a prayerful reflection on, on this scripture passage. So I'm going to read it one more time. I would invite you to, to perhaps close your eyes um, to be still for a moment. And again, as I read this passage, again, listen for words, listen for phrases that happen to awaken your heart and soul on this day. So again, be still and know that God is present. One of the scribes came near and heard Jesus and the Pharisees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than than these. So this isn't just uh, a commandment for us as the Board of World Mission to be following. This is a commandment for each of us as followers of Jesus um, to have <coughs> close to our hearts and close to our minds, close to our soul, and close to how we interact with others. So here yeah, I'd like for you to, again, if you've got a paper and pencil or pen, uh, to take a moment here, and, and uh, first of all, we're going to look at love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So take a moment and list some of the things that you truly cherish in your life. Maybe things like family, friends, sports team, um, you name it. What are the things that you cherish in life today? Spend a few moments and just jot those down or reflect on them in your own mind.
do that, I'd love for you to, to if you would care to, just to unmute yourself and share with the group some of those things that you cherish. Love to hear some of them. Anyone? <coughs> I think this year, the traditions have, you know, of course, faith in our church family, but just the traditions and the, even the routine of our service, our worship services, um, have taken on more meaning because we've been more reflective and have time on our hands. And, but yet, those things that are constant in our church have been especially meaningful this year. Others. I think number one on my list was, uh, net, well, it's number two, I'm sorry. <laughs> my children are number one, but number two is the church, the Moravian church. When you're away from it physically, I think you tend to treasure it more uh, than you do when you're going to church every Sunday and it's kind of habit. And and as, as, as Sarah correctly noted, traditions. But when you're physically away from it, it's, it means a great deal. I think our health is something we, sh we cherish. What was that? I think our health is something that? that we Health? Cherish. Oh, yes. 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 Others. Things Going along with what Lynn said, I cherish uh, members of the unity having been able to travel uh, to certain areas and those brothers and sisters are dear to me and reach out to me and I reach out to them. So that's a part of that and the second question. So let's spend a few moments on that second question that dear what do you do during the week that helps you to deepen your relationship with God again to cherish God with all of our heart and soul how do you feed that how do you deepen that how do you maintain that so a few moments and think of the different things that you might do during the week um, that helps you um, to deepen that relationship and to to allow that, that cherished relationship that. to deepen. Spend a few moments thinking about that. me uh the the most important one is is just that practice of the daily texts that we have here as a moravian church uh, again to begin each day um actually i end each day with reading tomorrow's um uh, daily text as i go to bed at night my wife and i we we read and reflect uh, and pray on the scripture the daily text for the next day so that even as we sleep um, those texts are already starting to, to make their way into our souls, but that is a, a, a wonderful part of, of how I do that. What are some other things that you all do to deepen that relationship? Anyone care to share? Working together on projects. Mm. Yes. And that'll come back in just a little bit as we talk about how we expend our strength by working. But yes, it, it, it finds its way here too. I think during the last few weeks, we've had to sort of review our relationship with God and with others, with the events in our country. Um, it, it really, you just are thankful for some base or of faith and, and how to relate to other people since that's what we're talking about relating with other people but it really wants you to explore in these 
times, not only your relationship with God, but, you know, you sort of wonder what other people's relationships with God is like. Yeah. Sort of following up on what you just said, Beth, the thing that keeps coming into my mind from what everyone's saying is relationship and relationship with God being strengthened through relationship with each other, reaching out and conversing with each other during this time when we're so separated, the desire to be close in whatever way we can and continue conversation brings me closer to God. And that that those feed each other, don't they? Um, and that's a never-ending circle. Wonderful. So we cherish and we love God with all of our heart and with all of our soul. Let's move on. To love God with all of your mind. So again, ponder for a few moments, what do you do that helps to develop your mind? How do you keep your mind active? Again, perhaps personal reading and research podcasts, reading the newspaper. What are the ways that you spend time developing your mind? A few moments to, to jot those down on your piece of paper. Chris, what does that say? Personal what? Re personal reading personal reading research oh reading yes because it's being covered up by the oh, pictures by the, sure, of people sure, yeah. <laughs> gotcha yes personal reading and research just stuff that you do podcasts that you might listen to or reading the, the daily newspaper uh, or <coughs> what you might do um, so just ponder those for a few seconds oh. Bless you. <clears throat> so share with me and others uh, what some of your, your um, disciplines are for, for developing your mind, keeping your mind active. What, what are you all doing? Reading in newspaper, reading books by the dozens <laughs> and the newspaper every day every day the book cast by wilkinson uh which talks about racial injustice and uh has been very um powerful to me during this time and then the book that maybe you recommended i can't remember who recommended it god's field um i'm not sure it was the uh, God's Field. It's um, about landscape, religion, and race in Moravian Wachovia. Um, it has been a real eye opener for me uh, about Moravians' um, relationship with um, the Black community and beginning as, with slavery and so on. Uh, it was. It's. It's been very new to me and. Uh, very uh, interesting and, and important, I think. I, I'm not sure I heard you correctly, but uh, um, there we are. All, some of us are involved in a discussion group uh, called The Color of Compromise, which has been extremely valuable by Tisby. Some, uh, I've forgotten his first name, Jamar Tisby. Yep. Excellent led by uh, Betsy and David Bombick. So related to that then is what do you do to deepen your biblical knowledge? Again, what we're doing today is certainly a good example of that, but Bible study, your own uh, personal Bible study, what other things do you do to deepen your biblical knowledge? So spend a few moments reflecting on that. I think technology has enabled us to to study because I'm in several book clubs and CAST is one of the books we have discussed. Um, and you also with Zoom, 
uh, you're able to see people and in this time of separation, that's very, very good. But discussion of Bible and books about the Bible or, or something I'm doing that, I, that is challenging to me and I'm thankful. Is one of the positives of this pandemic that uh, we can connect with more and more people and hear more and more of their knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, uh, it's been wonderful to be able for me to worship in a different community almost every week, just sometimes two a week um, when the times line up right. Um, so yes. Are there ways to develop and deepen your knowledge uh, of the Bible? Keep learning, people. Keep digging deeper. Love the Lord your God with all of your strength. So for a few moments, ponder this question. In a typical week, how do you expend your energy? In a typical week, how do you expend your energy? So again, examples of that might be work. Um, your friends, on, on your family, what you do for others in that sense, what you do volunteering to help others, what you do in your own personal recreation and exercise. Um, that's just a few examples. So what do you do in a typical week? How do you expend your energy? Spend a few moments pondering that. Hmm. One of the things I've tried to do during the pandemic is that I made a list of uh, some of the people at church. Uh, I've kind of fallen down on it lately. And uh, I just called some people that I uh, was a custom of seeing and wanting to know how my family and so forth happened to be doing. So uh, that's one of the things. I don't keep a time scale on that and I don't, I need to get back to that because it connects you. It's hard during this pandemic when we're home alone. So much. Yeah, for me, for me, another thing that's come out of the pandemic is indeed because of the change of the routine more attention to how how I expend my energy and the things that I do. Um, uh, so that's become far more important to me as well. Um, or else I, I lose it all. Okay, okay. Just Come here. watching television or uh, spending time online or those sorts of things. Um, so. so ponder now. In a typical week, how much of your time is devoted to doing things that are an expression of your relationship with God? So as, as you expend your energy, how are those things an example of your relationship with God that come out of your relationship with God? Try to calculate the amount of time that you devote yourself to serving others. So how does that work for you? And as I have spoken with uh, people in the congregations that I've served um, over these last months, uh, they have, uh, on the one hand, missed some of the activity at church. These would be people that are um, on church boards or on our sacristans or deaners um, or in some way do a lot around the church. Um, and all of those things have gone away as we have worshiped remotely. Um, and some of them have, have seen that as a welcomed uh, change so that they can focus more, a bit more on their relationship with God rather than doing, doing, doing. 
Um, but they've also said it's caused them to think about doing other things as well beyond the walls of the church because they had more time to do so. Have you all found that as well? Yes. Yes. Well, we've certainly had to be creative, and I'll have to give a shout out to Sarah and Mally and others for arranging drive-by events, especially during Christmas, to help other people at the Belo Home and, and uh, Sunnyside and lots of other uh, organizations around town. So I think people enjoyed seeing one another with the drive-bys. Of course, the candle tea went on uh, in a different way. So. All of those creative ideas, I think our church has tried really hard to continue to reach out. We appreciate that. Very good. Well, we're coming to the end of our time, uh, so we'll move on here. Um, and then, so those are those were all the things that, again, um, that passage from Deuteronomy lifts up that is so central. Um, to Judaism and is so central to us as Christians as well because it was essential to Jesus. Um, so those things that nurture our relationship with God, those things that we do that are a reflection of our relationship with God, um, then goes to love of ourself and love of neighbor. So as we wrap up our time here, ponder for a few moments. Again, perhaps list three words that you would use to describe yourself mm. three words that you use to describe yourself so just jot those down quickly and then that's how you describe yourself and i hope that's something that you love about yourself um I hope that as you have described yourself, you have described a gift that God has given you. Um, so it's, a, it's the way God has loved us and the way that we love ourselves. So now ponder three ways that you can be a good neighbor to others, to using those gifts, those things that you would describe about yourself. Um, how are those able to be used to reach out beyond yourself, to be a good neighbor to others, both, again, those that are next door uh, to you on your street corner, those that are in your city, um, those that are in our country, those that are in our world. And that's what the Board of World Mission helps us to do is to, to focus our energy beyond ourselves. So ponder for a few moments as we wrap up three ways that you can be a good neighbor to others. Anyone care to share some of their good neighborly things? And it's okay. This is not bragging. This is expressing your love for God in the way it gets expressed in your world. So please, let's hear some witness. How, do, how are you good neighbors to others? Who would have ever thought that the pandemic would last now almost a year and a promise to be longer and I'm just so grateful for um, actually my Facebook and having contact with the church, the drive-throughs and so forth. Um, but you're not, you're isolated, but you have connections and I'm grateful for that. And I'll follow up on what Mally said. It's nice to have a vehicle to reach out to others. And through our church, we're able to have a network of caring people and friends and, and organizations within the church that allow us to and encourage us to reach out to others, whether it's uh, nearby or far away. And we uh, appreciate that. Got Sunnyside Ministry right down the street. Um got uh, Laura Ridge that um, is such a resource and needs help right now. Um, 
We've got uh, what's going on in Nicaragua and Honduras to think about uh, things that we can be a good neighbor to them about uh, as they are in such a great time of need. Um, and there's a thousand and one others, uh, a thousand and one neighbors that need what we <laughs> have to offer. The gifts that you have been granted um, and the way that those can be used to help others. Any other thoughts as we wrap up here, good, good friends? Thoughts or questions? Thank you, Chris. This has been very helpful and well organized. Thank you so much for your leadership. Yep. And we'll dig in a little deeper on this next week. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a discernment prayer that actually helps us to, to decide what sorts of things we are being called to do, uh, a time of discernment. <clears throat> so actually, I'm going to email that stuff to Margaret. Um, and, I, and I'm assuming she'll be able to get that out to you via email early in the week. And then we'll actually do the, you can certainly look it, look it over, but I'll ask you to have that in front of you um, when we do the lesson next week. It's a really wonderful prayer of discernment. So that's what we'll do in, in, the, in the next week. Thank you, Chris. Any other questions or comments? Mally, any closing thoughts from you? Well, I thank you again today, and we look forward to next Sunday. It will be our fourth Sunday, uh, and um, I'm so grateful that we have made the best of technology. To Actually, it's very good to be able to do things live and hear from the Board of World Mission. Um, I'd like to tell people that I read on Facebook this morning that Chuck Harmon, who serves the um, the congregation, Tommy, help me in Walnut Cove, um, has COVID, and uh, he was still doing worship, but not as they generally do it. So we need to be aware of that as so much a part of our lives. Some of us have had our first vaccine and look forward to the second one. Um, Chris and Justin and, and the staff at Board of World Mission are used to getting out and being about and now they sit in front of a computer and stay connected with all of us and so I'm appreciative of that. Lord, Those of you who are on the World Mission team, there are a couple of things that we need to discuss in the next couple of weeks. I have a busy week this week all lined up. We're going to try to get us together the first week of February to talk about some things. It's great to see everybody. Um, be safe. Stay well. You as well.